Good morning. It's Hiker Dude Dad, and I am standing on the Susquehanna River, right at the junction of the Conestoga River, where these two bodies of water come together. We are going to explore the ghost town of Safe Harbor today. Uh, Safe Harbor is a, a town that was uh, popped up on the river. It was going to be a port. It was uh, started out as a big iron producing area, producing railroad uh, rails and everything in the area. Uh, the town was wiped out, destroyed by the flood, the ice jam flood of 1904. Off to this side, I can see Safe Harbor Dam, which revitalized the area in the 1930s. And we're gonna check out this whole area. We're gonna check out what's left of the town. We're gonna to kind of get a picture of what this place was back in the day, what it is today, and just kind of walk around and check it out. It is a beautiful spring day, let's go. So just to give you a feel of where I was standing here, we're right on the river. We're on a little fishing platform that walks down. High up above is the Enola Low Grade Trail. Uh, this part of the trail has been closed for a long time. Part of this bridge uh, was burned uh, years ago, arsoned. And um, they're in the midst of rebuilding that. It should open, I really feel like, any day now. Uh, but here's the Conestoga River coming in from under that. And we're looking south along the Susquehanna River. All right, so Safe Harbor Dam is behind me. Um, the Susquehanna River is 464 miles long. It's the longest river on the east coast of the United States. Uh, it travels from Cooperstown, New York, down through Pennsylvania, past Haver de Grace, Maryland, where it enters the uh, Chesapeake Bay and eventually the Atlantic. The Susquehanna River drains an area of 27 thousand square miles that's almost half of the area of state of Pennsylvania even though this is the longest river on the East Coast it is non navigable uh, it is the longest non navigable river in the United States it's good for some flat bottom boating and and, and uh, kayaking canoeing all that kind of stuff but it is uh, non navigable so this was really not a great idea to put a port here but there is a almost a 1200 foot elevation change from Cooperstown, New York to Haver de Grace, Maryland. And they uh, take advantage of that elevation change uh, to build three dams here on the lower Susquehanna River for hydroelectric power. The oldest of these dams is the Holtwood Dam, which I just visited recently. The second oldest dam is the Conagawingo Dam, which I was uh, at over the winter. We looked at eagles uh, flying around Conagawingo Dam, Conagawingo Dam. <laughs> and Safe Harbor here is the newest one built in the early 1930s. All right, so as I look north and pan east to west here, um, you can really see a 1930s kind of uh, architecture here in the uh, electricity generating area. There's kind of a really green island out here which is obscuring uh, a lot of the view of the dam here, but it is a concrete gravity dam, so it is almost 5,000 feet long, almost a mile wide here on the Susquehanna River. It was built for $30 million, which is $446 billion in today's money. Safe Harbor Dam generates 422 and a half megawatts of power, Holdwood Dam 230 megawatts, and 548 megawatts down at Conowingo. Uh, the Hoover Dam produces 2,000 megawatts of electricity. So these three dams total maybe two thirds of. Uh, Hoover Dam's output. So the 1930s with the construction of this dam was pretty much the second boom for Safe Harbor. Um, to this day, there is a small town here. I think I know where that is. I might uh, walk through there on the way back up. But um, from the 30s on, uh, you know, the dam is pretty much 
what you do here. From 1904 till the 1930s, this was pretty much a dead area uh, because of the flood. So we're gonna retrace steps, uh, you know, that happened during that flood. And we're gonna learn about the town in that first era from like the 1850s on up to uh, the 1900s. Okay, so I was way out here at this point here, just past these rocks are where the Conestoga uh, rushes in here. And I am beyond the security gates here, right along the dam. This is awesome. This is a uh, fishing bridge here. You can feel the hum of the turbines and everything working. This is crazy. Kind of a little break area here, some tables and chairs, vending machines. And I found some high water level markers. March 19th, 1936, 193.1, I don't know what that is. Is that feet? That can't be feet. June 24th, though, is our Agnes marker. June 24th, 1972, 195.5, and I will look up what that measurement could possibly be, but I'll tell you what, way up there, 202.4, there's a January 29th, 1978, and I do not know what that is, holy cow. That's over the winter, that must be from ice or something. Kind of announcement there but this is really unnerving there's announcements going on the grates here just rattling water underneath water rushing under us right here the railing everything's rattling shaking the power that's coming through here is insane That's insane, you do not want to fall down in there, holy cow. Oh God, I don't even, whoa, I can't believe I just stepped on that. I hate heights and weird stuff. I can't believe I just walked on that grate. Guess we could go like most of the way out here. This is great, we're gonna end up in the middle of the river here, I think. Difference with those high water numbers, we're at about 176 and a half right now of whatever that measurement is. And I'll tell you what, the river's pretty high right now. Lancaster got almost three inches of rain this past weekend. It's uh, almost the middle of May or so here. And we got like three inches of rain last weekend. Very uncomfortable out here. Very, very uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie. Full disclosure, shitting bricks right now. Oh good, there's a fence down here that's gonna stop me. Actually, I'm gonna have to turn around. Whew, man. My viewers, my friends, my subscribers. You know I love you. You know this. Because I spent way too much time on that shaking, vibrating hunk of concrete that was built in the 1930s for my own comfort. That was all for you guys. Please do me a solid. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Please ring the bell. Please share this with a friend. Just one friend. Everybody shares with a friend. We get some more subscribers. This channel does fun and maybe safer feeling stuff in the future. And I'll appreciate that. Thank you very much. Back to our hike. Let's go look for the early village of Safe Harbor, the uh, early 1800s, 1700s, 1800s. Let's go look for that village. So the beginning of the end in 1904 in March started right here. This is 
right behind me where the Conestoga River uh, empties out into the broad Susquehanna River. Um, and this is where the trouble happened. After all that ice broke up, ice that was two feet thick and solid, the Susquehanna was solidly frozen. After that ice broke up and moved down here, it blocked the Conestoga River right here. Icebergs the size of houses um, blocked up and started backing up into the Conestoga River. Um, Safe Harbor is along the Conestoga River here, not the Susquehanna, but by backing up the Conestoga, it flooded. The ice traveled up, up river with it and just wiped out homes. Um, 79 homes in Safe Harbor along the Conestoga uh, were just battered by ice. Families were sitting on the roofs of their houses um, for safety, was, uh, you know, while the ice just, just battered them. So just off River Road, there's these steps. According to the map, I think they run into the current 2022 Safe Harbor Village, but we'll see. I think there's maybe a, you know, a lot of steps here. So we're going up. When I get up here, there's roads that do connect back down to River Road. So I think we can maybe see what the town looks like today. So he came up the hill and popped out on this street, just like uh, Map said. So this is current safe harbor. Very nice. Back in the day, in the 1800s, you know, they built these English Tudor style houses. So it's neat that the modern houses here actually have that style also. Pretty cool. Such an idyllic little place here. Now we're going to go back to where the tennis courts are and safe harbor park. Um, we're going to go back there because that's where the old village used to be, um, <laughs> which is actually down the hill. So intriguing that they built this safe harbor village up on a hill when the original safe harbor village was <laughs> destroyed by flooding and ice jams along, along the two rivers. So we are headed downhill now and back to those parks. All right, so quick history on the village of Safe Harbor. Um, basically in the early 1800s, uh, they discovered iron ore in the hills surrounding the area. So um, between the iron ore and the confluence of the two rivers, the Conestoga and the Susquehanna and the canal systems on both, uh, they decided to put a village here and mine that iron ore. Um, railroads, huge at the time, so basically, Right across the river road from me right now are some tennis courts. That is basically the uh, footprint of the big rolling mill for all this iron, where it was uh, pinched between two big, couple big rollers, turned into railroad tie, uh, rails and everything else. So this rolling mill was the biggest building here. It had all kinds of stacks out front. Um, superimpose a picture here. But um, that was the biggest thing, and basically the tennis courts today are, are where it is. Uh, the town quickly grew into a town of 1,200 people based on this iron industry. Um, in 1851, and I want to look at my notes and get this absolutely right because it's my favorite quote about this place. In 1851, the town of Safe Harbor with barely 1,200 residents had, it was known as one of the booziest towns anywhere in America with its five taverns, three liquor stores, and six beer halls. We're gonna go see a building uh, that was used for basically unwinding after work, on payday, and letting loose in the booziest town in America in 1851 champs. So here are the two tennis courts where the rolling mill used to stand. 
It is uh, in 1861 when the Civil War started. They actually switched from making uh, rails to cannons, uh, specifically the Dahlgren cannon, which is the round-backed, one solid piece uh, cannon. Um, they had cylindrical cannons, you know, that were, I guess, welded in the back or something, and they just weren't as strong as that rounded back kind of absorbs the um, blast from the cannon a lot better and was a lot safer so they did start producing the Dahlgren cannons here. Also one last note on the booziest town in America. Um, when Dr. Mom and I did the Tunnels of Enola Low Grade Adventure, I'll link that up here, um, that story actually had its roots in Safe Harbor on one of those boozy boozy nights. So. We're going to head up the hill here on the Blue and White Trail, I believe it is, and go see some of these other buildings. So first thing you come to is this plaque on this site in 1846, 70 houses were built on streets named Water Mill Hall, Walnut, Cedar Spring, Griffin, Willow and Race for employees of the Safe Harbor Ironworks. So we'll head up this hill into the Arboretum, Arboretum, Arboretum. Okay, so your first stop here is the stone wall. And up there is the Iron Master's Mansion. Big stone mansion built in 1725, predates the village by a hundred years uh, by an early Mennonite settler, Benjamin Eshelman. It says current owners, so I'm guessing it's private property, but it's apparently pr uh, very well restored, very faithfully restored by the current owners. So we're going to walk up here. Just grass now, but this used to be a street back in the 1800s. So we're about to go in the woods here at the end of s the former Spring Street. Uh, and this is Oddfellows Hall was started in 1848 as the Conestoga Lodge number 334 of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows. Uh, they kind of had their meetings and gatherings uh, for about 40 years or so. And during the boozy times, this was a place to be apparently. Uh, uh, you know, your paycheck. This was your Saturday night coming down, throwing down here in Safe Harbor. All right, gonna head into the woods here on, uh, like I said, the former Spring Street and see what's up here. So now we're still on the blue and white trail here and we're cutting through the forest on a little path here. I'm on the lookout for depressions where homes used to be. Some of those 70 uh, houses that were built here. Uh, they were duplexes, so they apparently have a shared fireplace in the middle and uh, you can see the two depressions on either side where the houses were and then the, the raised part in the middle where the fireplace was. All right, so still on Spring Street here, we've come upon marker five, which looks blank at first, but it's so faded. But there are almost ghostly images of the school that once stood here. So, yeah, this was the Safe Harbor Independent School built in 1850. Uh, there were two one-room schoolhouses, one here and one right on the other side of the Conestoga. Uh, that one was destroyed in a storm in the 1880s. This place is really prone to storms and flooding. I don't know why they call it Safe Harbor. But, um, spiderweb, uh, yeah, so that was the site, former site of a one-room schoolhouse. It is just all woods today, barely on a, on a path leading through. More spiderwebs. And we're coming to a clearing. So this clearing is a site 
of the former St. Mary's uh, Catholic Church, built in the 1800s by the Irish that settled here, uh, basically to make the process the pig iron and everything here in the area. Uh, they went over to Ireland. They were in the middle of their potato famine. Um, Irish dudes are like, yeah, we'll go to safe harbor over in America. And uh, they called them puddlers because it was basically just a sweaty job. They were just always in puddles of sweat. But the Irish were here. They created St. Mary's Catholic Church down behind me. I'm sure they no doubt also contributed to it being one of the booziest towns in America. Um, and what ghost town wouldn't be complete without a cemetery? St. Mary's Cemetery, dedicated in memory of the faithful departed. May their souls rest in peace. A lot of tombstones up here and yeah it is all right so during construction of the Enola low grade railroad uh, reports are that about 200 people died while uh, constructing that it's a 29 mile long low grade railroad it's, today it's a rail trail um, it was long and flat and uh, serviced the area here. So 200 people died with that. So a lot of um, Civil War veterans, a lot of old tombstones here. Victims of shootings and stabbings, which also goes back to our uh, tunnels of the Enola low grade. Um, adventure that we did from Uncharted Lancaster. Um, that started out with, uh, if I recall correctly, some kind of a murder and hiding treasure and, and we were off uh, to the tunnels there to, to find that. I also want to, as always, give a shout out to Adam Zern at Uncharted Lancaster. When I was doing my research for this uh, little exploration here, um, Basically 95% of anything that I found about Safe Harbor and the, and the history of it uh, was done by Adam Zern at Uncharted Lancaster. Uh, they have these awesome challenges uh, to do their scavenger hunts where you learn history and everything. But honestly, Adam is probably like the premier historian of Lancaster County. Uh, he really does some good work and great research and basically much of the research that I used making this video was because of him. Um, there is a safe harbor adventure. You can see I got my hand to the king. 3D printed reward. Uh, this is about the fifth probably adventure I've done with Uncharted Lancaster now and it is fantastic. I'm not going to give you any clues. Look it up on his site and give it a shot. So taking the blue path back here towards Cedar Street, this has got to be a house site. Uh, with the ground cover, it's hard to see the kind of swells, but if this was a street coming up here, I'm sure this was a house site. This is a house site kind of leading up, up Cedar Street. So we're basically coming back to the Arboretum, Arboretum, Arboretum. All right. Thanks for coming along here while I explored Safe Harbor. This has been on my list for a long time and uh, finally just got around to doing it. Um, another shout out to Adam Zern from Uncharted Lancaster. Uh, all that information was invaluable. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please ring the bell to get notifications. Please share the page with a friend. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.
Although this is the longest river on the East Coast, it is the longest non-navigable. It is a concrete gravity dam. It is 5,000 feet long, so 